good morning, everyone. Uh, the uh, June 16, 2023 work session of the Board of Alderman is now called to order. Uh, based on our agenda, the first item is a presentation by Kevin Stafford of Neil Schaefer regarding the results of the South Montgomery traffic study. Mr. Schaefer, Mr. Uh, Stafford, the floor is yours. Well, good morning. How are y'all? All right. I believe it's a pretty good party up there. And I'm giving you all my clip notes in the background because y'all have a clip with you before. You know I go a little fast sometimes. So between taking notes and trying to remember what in the world did he say again, I'm going to give you this for, for follow up. But uh, first off, thank y'all for having me in. Uh, we had a meeting in here a couple weeks ago uh, to go over some of our preliminary recommendations to the planning study for South Montgomery. And so what that's going to give, and I'm going to leave the rest of these here uh, for now. What this is going to give you, though, what this is and is not, y'all remember about a year ago we finished off your regional transportation plan that was coordinated with MSU and Octibaha County and yourselves. And South Montgomery was part of that. We recommended looking at some additional roadways and east-west connector through South uh, Farm. Uh, recommended some a third lane and or some center turn lanes down the south southern end of South Montgomery south of Academy that would be beneficial talked about around about it uh, Academy that might be beneficial talked about looking at some signalization changes that might be beneficial and so what this planning study is, is a deeper dive on some of those recommendations it's not a full look at South Montgomery for instance we gave recommendations uh, to physically make on highway 12 or around highway 12 north and south of that intersection of South Montgomery so we didn't relook at those things uh, the three main things this is going to look at was the east-west corridor to go through South Farm and whether that's a feasibility y'all should look at going forward. Uh, looked a little deeper dive into the roundabout and the benefits and how that looks shaping up long term for you and then looked at really from the signalization from Academy up to Loxley and looked at those three signals, Lynn being in the middle and what things, lane assignments, signalization timings, what things were beneficial to you there. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk on today. I'm going to go as quick as I can to get through it. So uh, with that, we have a full report that we're going to give to you with these recommendations. Uh, there's some short term and long term, high cost and low cost items. So uh, there's a little bit of everything in that. So with that, um, I will say that my colleague here, Case Fulcher, that's over against the wall. He's the brains of this. Y'all know me better than that. So as I know, I, you already said it today. So, uh, but with that, Case is here in Starkville. Uh, actually, teaches on campus as well. Uh, traffic transportation. Uh, that's his thing. And so, uh, I give him all the credit for the things you see in here. And so, uh, here again are just the three obje objectives I've just talked through. So, next slide, please. Uh, the first is an east-west connector. So, what we did here is there's two main property owners, as y'all know, the Ramsey family, and then. MSU that owns uh, property through the South Farm. So next slide. Uh, what we did is we looked at the different routes to go through the farm and also sat down with the Ramsey family uh, to see what their benefits were, their, their requests were going through that. Neither were showstoppers, if you will, but they all had requests, as you can imagine. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but we did pick five routes. There was only really one route or two routes through the Ramsey property, the southern end and the northern end. Yeah, I know that property may develop at some point in time. Uh, but through MSU's property, there were five routes we saw as feasible. David Howell, uh, who is a gym to deal with, said, hey, let me go to the different colleges that, are, that represent these areas on the South Farm. Let me get you some pros and cons uh, for these routes. He did that, provided us a document, three pages worth of every route and the con for every route and, and really uh, routes four and five. Next slide, please. Uh, are the two that they really chose that were best for them. So you can see the one, two, three, four, five routes here, north being up. Uh, this is the Ramsey property here. This is Blackjack. Uh, this is uh, Stone up in this in this area, but uh, obviously the southern end of Stone, and then of course Hell State that comes around. Um, four is the route through that would. Uh, if you could go back to that slide. Thank I quit touching it. I know it does that. Uh, the other one ties into Hell State. The other ties into Blackjack. So um, next slide, please. With that, if y'all recall, when I first came back to you, what we did is we took a combination of the traffic data that we've had in the past that was done during COVID area for the overall study, and we updated that. So we brought it into what traffic you're seeing now since we're finally out of the COVID side of things. But we also took, uh, used uh, Republic HQ, which is cell phone data. And we took the origination uh, to the destination info that comes out of that, synthesized it with the actual traffic data, and it tells us where people are going inside of those numbers. And what we found is the east-west corridor only takes about 10% of the traffic off of South Montgomery. It takes about 40% off of Loxley. Now, with that, y'all's uh, growth rate on South Montgomery and in the city in general was looked at about 1.6%. And so what that tells you at a 10% reduction on South Montgomery is in seven years, your traffic volumes that are an issue today are going to be right back where they are. And so it's a 1.5 mile, uh, next slide please, it's a 1.5 mile uh, stretch that for a seven year benefit, we just don't see the return on investment in going through that. 
Um, here is just a real quick delay uh, reduction that you'll see. In blue is if you did nothing, obviously if you were to build the road, uh, these are the, the reduction in time delays at these intersections along South Montgomery. So is it a benefit? Yes. Uh, but is it worth the investment? We don't think so. Next slide. This kind of touches on uh, some of the cons that came out of what we looked at for all the routes. Again, besides the three-page uh, document that we received from MSU, y'all now have that for the file for all the routes. Um, we looked at the combination of you would have two new signals, one at Shadowwood, which was coming through the Ramsey property, and then you may have one at Blackjack, and we're concerned about the spacing of where Loxley and Stone are with Blackjack, a new signal coming in there. And then if you come into Hell State, um, yeah, that's, that's just an added cost. Do you have a question? The only, you're, you're speaking about coming off of South Montgomery, somewhere on the, the Rams apartment, just south of Mr. Sandy's house. And Correct. All your other options are coping from that to, to split somewhere between Blackjack and Hell State. Correct. And there were, your there's... only option is with Rams property. And for what we looked at, for where we are, correct. And of course, it also it also introduces uh, to Sherwood Forest new traffic to that. We, we looked at possibly taking it through there, and just this was the lowest hanging fruit to take a road through, right, for connection. So, um, and so of course, and I won't get into all the details, but uh, you'll have on here between the traffic congestion that it would bring uh, to the parking area over at the Wise Center, uh, and the reduction of parking availability to the. Uh, introduce noise and congestion that we, you would bring to the neighborhood area and of course to the South Park and well as well where they have a lot of research going on so for all those reasons besides the cost of the road and all the other uh, amenities that have to come with it, such as signals for a seven-year benefit we just didn't see it so um, next slide so next we looked at kind of reviewing the overall operation from Academy up to Loxley next slide please um, some of the things we looked at and, and our recommendations that we're making, and again, going back to the money, looking at the east-west corridor and the benefits of South Montgomery versus we think your money is better spent on South Montgomery. Um, before I get into this, we did also look at an east-west connection over to Louisville, and that's even less of a benefit than through MSU. So just know we did look at that. Uh, just, just for the sake, it only reduced traffic by 2%. So again, you, you, within less than a year and a half, you'd see that back to it, so uh, to normal traffic. Uh, conditions you see today. So first off, what we saw when you're going northbound on South Montgomery, we get to Loxley, we'd recommend replacing that head, putting in a right turn green so that when uh, westbound Loxley is turning that double left turn, you'll also have people uh, going right on red who are a little bit slower right now, give them a green automatically. So uh, as the mayor said when we were first talking about it, well, people should be going right on red anyhow. Yeah, but that time delay from stopping and having to restart, we're recommending to replace that signal head to put in a solid green when that left uh, that westbound left turn on Lockley is going. Also, to update some of your clearance times, they currently didn't meet the MUT City standard. That's a minor recommendation. Uh, if y'all are curious, for those who can be flexible in the morning and afternoon when you travel, your peak times are 7.15 to 8.15 in the morning uh, for this stretch. That was pretty consistent through all the intersections, whereas the afternoon peak changed just a little bit uh, from about 4.30 to 6. And so uh, for those that can adjust their travel schedules, uh, that's one way to help your condition there. So. Um, but we did look at optimized timings. We think that's y'all's best low hanging fruit right now because all of your cabinets, all of your controllers are already set up to run what we call time of day operations. And so we can give you those timings to adjust. Right now, uh, y'all are on a free operation, which is the same timing set all day, every day. Uh, and so we feel like if y'all could adjust those time of day operations for these peak hours, that will help your flow overall. Um, and then most all areas experience decreased uh, in, uh, the, the delays when you do that. And then um, the only one I'll mention, I'll come back to this here in a minute, is eastbound Lynn Lane. This study goes through 2045, and the eastbound does fail in 2045, even with the optimization. So we have some recommendations there to improve that as well. So next slide. Um, Coordinated timings, if y'all can, uh, a lot of people like to say, well, we want to be able to see the signals all change at the same time to move us through all at one time. Shouldn't that help us? In this case, it does not. Because you have such a strong side flow coming from the other three streets, uh, for instance, Lockley's, Loxley's side flow is so much stronger than Academy and Lynn uh, that if you made them and coordinated them all at the same time, you've all of a sudden hurt Lynn and Academy and actually put those level services in a much worse state, whereas your optimized timings were uh, much, much better. So. Won't go through all of this, I'll just say that we did look at it, and in the report we do talk about the benefits and the negative impacts it has if you were to coordinate those timings uh, through that stretch. Next slide. Lane modifications. This is one, uh, going back to I mentioned Lynn Lane, uh, your eastbound movement. Uh, it does fail uh, with your traffic uh, progression in 2045. 
One thing we would look at is using y'all's existing footprint and reassigning lanes both on South Montgomery and on your eastbound uh, four lane lane. So next slide, I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Uh, right now, y'all have three lanes. Uh, we would uh, propose that you would turn, once you get, quit doing that, Kevin, back, back out a little bit. The, uh, the Nottingham, once you get past Nottingham, keeping your existing turn lanes as it is there, but once you get past going to two northbound, so that when you come out of Lynn, you have two northbound and a dedicated left. So that adds a lane going north, gives you more queue space. But once you add that uh, double northbound lane, you can also have a double left turn now out of lane. So picture what you have at Loxley. Now you've done it at Lynn as well. That helps that eastbound uh, movement. With that, you would need to get rid of your island that you have there now, uh, and it, it would adjust your pedestrian crossing just a hair there. But you could still have a, a right turn. It just wouldn't be a dedicated right turn like you have right now on your eastbound at Lynn. So this is alternate number one. This is the one that gives you the most benefit uh, that we've looked at. Uh, next slide shows you the next alternate. Really here in both recommendations, we always recommend keeping this double northbound lane in place. Here you just uh, replace your island and give you a little bit better uh, protection for your pedestrian to meet code. You can see it kind of mimics the island on the other side, but you only have that one left bound. Next slide is going to show you though uh, the benefit between the two A and, I mean a one and two. They're both viable, but again, uh, because of the uh, future for Lynn, you can see alternate one give you your better reduction. And it's a pretty huge reduction. You can see you go from a vehicle delay of 60 seconds, in a minute in other words, all the way down to 10 seconds just by doing that. So uh, while you can optimize signals help everywhere, this will also help uh, your volume on Lynn going forward. And again, all you've done is re-strike your street in these cases. So again, a low, low cost benefit that will help Lynn Lane. So next slide. Finally, I've talked about the roundabout on Academy. Uh, your favorite, right? And so, uh, next slide. The things we looked at here, a combination of what benefit does it have to the intersection from a time delay, uh, from a level of service delay, and then also does it need to have what I call a slip lane or a bypass lane. Um, well, basically, long story short, it has a huge benefit. Next slide uh, kind of shows you the reduction, uh, a 93% reduction in delay because uh, of around, or using a roundabout at that intersection. Now, the bypass lanes are a much bigger footprint. You know, I know that's a tight intersection. So our recommendation is to go without the bypass lanes because you still see the benefit. And the bypass lane, if you picture, if you're southbound on uh, South Montgomery and you're wanting to go on Academy, for instance, go westbound, the bypass lane would keep you from going through the roundabout and you just bypass it, in other words. But again, you can imagine that footprint. Because of the volume that's there, we don't see any negative uh, impact by not having the bypass lane. So avoid the cost, avoid the footprint. And the roundabout still is a huge benefit there. Um, next slide. Um, this just basically just says what I just said. Next slide, please. There are a few other things we saw. Again, low hanging fruit, just things to look at as y'all move forward. Uh, next slide. Some in your overlays, uh, a lot of the uh, exits or uh, entrances onto and into subdivisions had some buildup that probably with time need to be remedied. Next slide. There were some uh, site distance issues with signage uh, that could be fixed over time that would uh, increase safety and um, pulling out onto South Montgomery uh, in some places. This goes in a little more detail of what those are. Next slide. Um, there's some pedestrian timings right now that are not timed appropriately for what it takes to cross the intersection. These would only go into place if a pedestrian is there pushing the button. So uh, this, these would not impact the signal every time, all the time, only when a pedestrian is there and actually pushes the button. But these are some recommendations and timings we would uh, suggest that you make to accommodate that user. So next slide. Uh, and then finally recommendations. So in, in summary, the east-west route is not beneficial. Uh, next slide, the, uh, the short-term benefits, uh, you, the signal optimization, which I talked about, uh, the northbound right turn at Loxley that will uh, be at the same time as the uh, westbound left turn, uh, constructing the alternate one at Lynn Lane, which is again just restriping in that area, and then in the long term, constructing the roundabout at Academy, and then uh, while we didn't get into it, it was in the regional report, but doing the third lane and or left turns and further south of Academy as different neighborhoods develop out. So for instance, uh, Adelaide, since we were involved with that one, once it reaches phase six, uh, it's recommended that those center left turn lanes and decel lanes are put into place. And so we recommend as that continues to develop out south of there, that those accommodations be made by those developers as well. So um, so again, those are the, some of the short term, long term, and, the, and even the, the bad news, but also you can say now for the east-west border, you've looked at it, uh, you, you've discussed it with MSU and the landowners, we know what's there and what it's not. So uh, next slide. What we're going to do next, uh, we've already uh, spoken a little bit, we'll start with utilities and get with them on optimizing the time of day uh, for the signals through there since we would know it's already ready to go. 
And then we're going to finalize a report and get with Cody and his team and talk about how some of these improvements can be filtered in at their time, y'all's time, uh, when you get ready. But basically, uh, just be here to answer questions as they arise as you, as you move forward. But again, so this wasn't an overall study of everything and all things. It was the main things that came out of the regional with a little bit deeper dive into those recommendations. So with that, uh, it's about as quick as I can go and be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Stafford, thank you. At this time, does any member of the board have any questions for Mr. Stafford? Appreciate the work uh, and the data answers a lot of questions. I know I have my biases. I don't like roundabouts, and I thought the East West was the way to go across Shadowwood, but the data speaks for itself. So uh, we need to share this with the public. In what case, uh, I know you did most of the work. All, all the work. All the work. I also want to thank the board. I know you all have priorities in your own boards, and this costs some money. Oh, but it's your I'd like to say to that end, these seem like really cost effective solutions and immediate impact solutions as they're implemented, and I appreciate that. Absolutely. They're there for the taking, right? So. Any other questions from board members? Just tell me one. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, from the Ramsey family, have y'all heard any discussions or anything? Is this more of an eminent domain? Talk or is this one that's something they obviously they know about it, right? Right. They're they're aware of it. Um, you know, they have future plans, hope hopeful plans for that property. So things such as detention ponds, uh, will be increasing the impervious footprint by running a road through there and they see a benefit with that road being able to develop off of it. So we talked about where that would make most sense to put. And if we did this where maybe jointly we could have a detention pond on that property. So that's the level of discussion we got into. But again, the kind of the tail wagging the dog, if you can't come through MSU's property and it doesn't make sense for y'all to construct it and the rest of it's a moot point. Right. What kind of figures are you talking about a total road this? Nowadays with an open two lane road, again you know, if you want to accommodate all users, bike and ped, if you want to have obviously street lighting, you're going to have drainage that's going to go through this area as well. You could look as much as $4 million a mile. So I would say on the low end, $6 million to build uh, this road. And that hadn't factored into any land costs uh, that may come into it or other amenities you'd want to put with it. So uh, it's just one of those, I know there's a sewer line through there that needs to be accommodated future for Starfleet utilities. There was discussion about, again, some sidewalk aspects of it. So, uh, But you could easily see upwards uh, $6 million plus to go from there. Simple yeah, two lane, two lane road. Yeah. I just like your comment about the percentile, percent and a half, and seven year return on investment. But we've all, you know, like you know, and you know, I have the government discussed for another 14 years. Um, so, you know, you look at the return on investment, they go, you know, you know, no returns, no investment. So, it's one of those, we don't do anything. Uh, I don't know, it's one of those guys, something has to be done at some point, and then I would consider it explosive growth when you start looking at the numbers. Of Adelaide development law and the other neighborhoods yeah. that are coming up. You know, I think there's going to come a time that, especially if commercial continues to develop further south, people are going to start going south and using poor house and coming up Hell State. It's just going to be a matter of time that the level of service, once you get to Academy, may get, if you don't do some of these improvements, will get so bad people will just find a different route. That's just nature in general. So I think that's also why the long term planning for poor house and all the development along poor house and of course Hell State's there will eventually become more in use. And I think the university, I know the university is making investments to connect both Artesia Road and Bulldog Way to Hell State as well. So I think that all that area down there will continue to grow and people will start to use it more. Thank you. I'm going to you I, I wanted to just um, to, to tag on to Ben's point, Fisher, I understood what you were saying earlier is that while the east-west option is an opportunity, it doesn't provide as much relief as these other Correct. options that you presented to us. And we certainly uh, could reevaluate once some of those are implemented to see That's where right. we are. Yeah, I think one of the things that first came out of this discussion when we were trying to scope it was nobody had had the true conversation with the university of is this even an option that's on the table. And so now not only do we have the option, we have in writing from them why it's not an option for them in certain cases. So, But they were very cooperative. I can't stress that enough. They, nobody said no. They said, well, let's just see what, what we can make happen. So. Is there a form of recognition again? Well, just um, last thing you're talking about, bypass lane on the roundabout. Of, uh, South Montgomery or Academy and South Montgomery, that's such a tight intersection. Is that even, you may be lost me on that, but is, is that even feasible, the amount of spaces you have that have a bypass? Like, to buy a house? Yeah. I can't, but such a, 
Is there a full bypass roundabout? Um, over by the gas station, yes. the shell, it's uh, it does not have bypass lanes though. That's so that's just a regular bypass. roundabout. That's right. That's a regular roundabout. Put in front of that fit. That Correct. Fit. It would. Uh, we provided that in the regional plan. I can provide that to y'all. But we looked at it from the bypass from an operational standpoint, the bypass lanes that is, and it would you would have to buy some properties, some private properties, some houses that you would want to avoid. We feel like there's a way to fit within the not necessarily the right of way that you own fire stations on the corner, which helps your situation, right? So. Uh, there are some ways you could design that roundabout to function with a much lesser impact on pro impact on private property and still give you benefit. So we just didn't see the benefit of the bypass lane. But yes, it would be a land hog that would get you more into a private property acquisition perspective that I don't think is worthwhile. If there are no further questions, Mr. Sample, we thank you for your fine work and your great presentation. Thank you very much. All right, we'll get y'all a final report and a summary of all our recommendations. Go from there. Thank y'all. Yes, I have a great day. weekend. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda for the work session discussion of the agenda item for the June 2023 20, meeting of the Board of Alderman for the City of Starkville. Uh, going down the agenda, um, number four, approve the Board of Alderman and Mr. Hardin, attorney, are they ready? Yes. Any object to consent? Consent. Those one consent, please. Uh, down to public hearings, Mr. Allen, uh the first one, if we send you materials, about the construction of townhouse on yes, I know the planning zoning commission just met, I think on Tuesday, you know, yes. approval um, on the, I think on the northern side of Guest Street, off yes. Park Road. Yes, they recommended uh, approval uh, unanimously. Yes, sir. And um, it was public hearing, so yep. we have public hearing. Okay, and the next item um, on the 306 South Jackson Street uh, for the accessory down to all things planning zoning just they recommended on Tuesday, uh, unanimously you know, for approval too. Yes, there were very minor additions to that. Uh, we did add minor additions to the stuff that was previously in it. There was some sections that were added. It was mainly dealing with code enforcement, the actual way that it's administered, and uh, I think that was it. What did Cody? You didn't have any additions? One very minor clerical addition that was just the completion of the work. It, and because of the the added items, we also have started advertising for a third public hearing for consideration, and that would be on July 5th. So this is just a second public hearing with no consideration. Very good. Mr. Allen, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Attorney, uh, the board has uh, been briefed on this at some point in the past about the uh, lease agreement with Dan Kemp uh, Real Estate on Action Way at Zen Station University Drive. This is the first um, of this kind of the city. So I'll be briefly um, um, just on the board just a quick summary of it yeah vice mayor this is a, a lease agreement with the camp so to add outside seating uh, over just off of Ackerson way right in that corner is an unused property the board had already approved going forward with them we work with their council and put, put an agreement together uh, that it's a 10-year agreement with a no it's a 15-year agreement with a 10-year option at their request they're putting a lot of money into adding that seating and we're going to put a sidewalk alongside there as well and uh, it's it, it's ready to go right with the 10-year option at near the end of the 10-year option then there can be an automatic renewal for an additional five-year option correct yes sir uh in objection to uh consent is there a right adjustment that there is yes, yes ma'am and uh, and the right adjustment uh is if the exercise option to renew for the 10 year then the board can negotiate uh, up to not exceed seat amount. That's good. Not initial lease amount, right? That's correct. Very good. good. And I'm just really going to consent then. Okay, the next item here uh, is uh, on the community development and planning department consideration of the budget set at 305 Greensboro Street in the Greensboro Historic District. Yes, this was a previously approved item uh, from several years back. They ran into some issues and it couldn't construct, but all the construction is being done in the rear of the property and nothing in the front is being affected. And that was unanimously approved by the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. Any objections to consent? Consent? Okay. okay. Engineering, uh, sir, I first item approval of the uh, utilization of 23 Street Improvement Project under it to fund the sand, road, soil, cement, and DBST roadway improvement project. Any objections to consent? Consent. Consent to that item. Uh, number two, on engineering consideration of approving the engineering department to advertise for the 2023 soil cement DBST roadway improvement project and objection consent. 
Uh, item three, uh, the Corporation of Corporation Neil Schaefer as the preferred consultant to provide professional engineering and land service for the Old Mary Roadway Improvements Project and authorization for the mayor to negotiate and execute engineering consultant contract in objection consent. consent. Consent four, consideration of travel and training for Stephen Kackleman to attend PSMJ Project Manager Boot Camp in Nashville, Tennessee. And you uh, consent for that item, no objection. Number five, change order to increase the contracts owned by $8,540.70 to SDK Landscape for the Cornerstone Boulevard. What is that for? Uh, uh, well, that's an additional amount for Cornerstone Boulevard for some needed services for right away clearance, mulch, uh, irrigation, and other related matters. Any objection to that? Consent on that. Uh, item number um, six, uh, consideration of approving the proposal amendment from Atwell and Jen for additional services for electrical material package to the highway one to the new grant project. Consent. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll pass the claims docket. Uh, we'll see all consent. Our uh, honorable budget chair will get the short acceptance of the May 2023 financial objection. Consent. Okay. Uh, consideration of budget adjust for the 2023. I've um, reviewed what Lisa and I have put together. It's all recognition of revenue and living sometimes between nine items for the table to claims. Not the last one we'll go to the shoe. Okay, um, five items on human resources. The first one is to hire Kagan McKenna's police officer to start police, uh, police department consent. Uh, two, request authorization to hire Alexi Henderson as the student attorney city clerk's office. Consent for that. Three, authorization to hire Nicholas Hollis as intern for Charlotte Field Ball. Consent for that. Four, request authorization to hire Jacob Mitchell as the French line of station in the Star for utility park. Consent for that. Five, authorization to hire Stephanie Walker as residential driver center for animal search report. Consent for that. Information technology. One, request approval of yearly contract for Microsoft Office 365 from Next Cell. Consent for that. Two, request approval of yearly renewal of antivirus software from Next Step for $9,019. Okay, consent. Uh, parts, uh, item one, consideration to approve the purchase of fourteen thousand one hundred dollars for fifty trash and handled lids from trash can warehouse, the lowest quote. Consent. Okay, consent for that. Okay, number two, request approval to accept withdrawal of bid award to U Line on July 5, 2022, and award the purchase of two ADA metal picnic tables and ten metal picnic tables in the amount of fourteen thousand one hundred dollars from U Line, the lower two quarters. Consent. Consent for that. Number um, uh, 1A on the police department request approval for Officer Alexandra Nash to assist the National Institute of Standards and Technology in ISD with drone training held by the Law Enforcement Drone Association LEDA from June 20th through uh, June 23rd, 23 in Tennessee to assist with aerial tests, method validation for NISD with calls to be reversed by the drone responders. In objection for consent. Consent. Consent for that one. B, uh, request approval for CPL Matthew Basker, Officer uh, Nessis, and Officer Kyle Eves to attend Utility Inc. car camera installation and training courses to be held July 11, 2023 at the GPSO Logistics Supply in Colfax, Louisiana. Consent for that. And finally, on our award session um, matter today is utility of course authorization to approve agreement with Barbara for evaluation of emergency general place water treatment plant aeration system in the amount of twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars. Consent for that that concludes the discussion of agenda items. The next item on the agenda for the work session is that this meeting, this work session now stands adjourned. Everyone have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Thank you for participation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.